Hello everyone, welcome to Roads to Migrate, initiated by International Refugee Rights Association. This is Gizemdik and today we are going to host Senan Vargun Adlıtkan for talking about Sweden and migration. Needless to say, Sweden as a European country faces with grand wave of immigration. Her approach to migration process should be evaluated in order to gain a better comprehension about the attitudes of European states. Before moving to the questions, I would like to introduce Senam Alutkan briefly. She is a master's student at Malmö University, Sweden. Her subject topic is international migration and ethnic relations. Hi Mrs. Alutkan, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We are happy to have you today. Yeah, me too. Thank you for having me. And I would like to ask, can you please explain us the immigration process and Sweden in general? Is Sweden a highly preferred country to immigrate to? And what is the ethnic and demographic distribution of immigrants coming to Sweden? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, the migration policies differ according to the reasons uh, you, to migrate, you know, such as refugee status, education, work, or marital status, it might be. Uh, when you're a refugee, for example, inherently, you migrate to Sweden because of the, this refugee status, depending on the quotas. Uh, I think the unique, of, uh, unique part of Sweden in this manner is its quota capacity is higher than the other countries. But if you want to immigrate with other reasons, such as work, for example, uh, I could say uh, innovative calls are pretty various here. And uh, in daily life, for example, you can encounter a lot of Turkish or Indian ITs uh, or other internationals all over the world. We could say them like technical people. Uh, And uh, in education aspect, The universities are also famous with its quality, but you have to pay if you are a non-EU citizen. Uh, but there are plenty of scholarships here. Uh, for example, I have arrived Sweden with the Swedish Institute scholarship. Uh, but uh, besides this scholarship, the universities have their own quotas and their own scholarships, and you can apply to them in order to have an education if you're a non-EU student, because EU students, uh, the other youngsters, don't pay. Uh, I mean, all, all the people, there is no age limit, sorry for that. Uh, but I could say the EU students don't pay anything for the universities in Sweden. So you can also encounter other internationals in uh, Swedish universities. But uh, if we talk about the marital status, I think it's the easiest one. Uh, A lot of people also migrate to Sweden by using the marital status. I even have some friends uh, who migrated to Sweden with a sambo, which means coexist relation. Or there is another word for another relation called serbo. And it means love relation, but in different places. You can be in different countries uh, indeed. And uh, first of all, Sweden... When you ask about the ethnic and demographic distribution, there are a lot of uh, research about it, but uh, shortly I could say uh, Sweden is the third country which received the most migrants in the world. According to the statistics, uh, the majority belongs to Syrian population, especially after the Syrian civil war. And then comes uh, Iraqis, Finns, Polish people, Iranians, Somalians, Afghans, and then coming the Balkan countries because of the conflicts in the region, and then Turkey, I could say. Well, I see. Then what is Sweden's immigration policy? How do they respond to this process? Has there been a change over time? Uh, yeah, uh, just before the migrant law change, uh, changed, it was easier to stay in Sweden after migration. Uh, for example, it was enough for only one of the couples or partners uh, to work and the other could stay like that. But now um, both of the partners should work in order to extend their residence permits. And now we hear that it's getting even harder to obtain long-term residence permits. And, uh, you know, Sweden is getting affected by this conflict environment, uh, environment all over the world. And especially the policies of a very close neighbor, Denmark, uh, they have been implementing very harsh policies. 
probably you have heard about it and they are sending some refugees to their uh, standard countries and um, and the overall anti-refugee and anti-migration policies uh, or let's say point of view in the world i could say it's uh, still easier to migrate to sweden compared to other european countries but it is not as easy as before so there are a lot of ways to migrate here uh, but it's not that easy like before and because there is also an against voice uh, among the society and yeah i could say like that yeah then how do you regard integration and adaptation process of immigrants in sweden does sweden government take an initiative for the integration of immigrants can you explain it for us yeah uh, integration is one of the fields that we are working in uh, so i can say there are some action plans implemented in sweden and there are plenty of researchers we also are getting thought of uh, due to these implementations for example there is a 1999 action plan that promotes integration as a participation in society and also a dialogue between different cultures uh, some of the studies argue that uh, the swedish policy on integration regarding for example malmo example sees migration um, as a diversity but uh, these integration policies do not indicate uh, policy learning among the locals the local swedish people and migrants for example i can say there are a lot of authorities they deal with integration and they make it easier um the integration process among the society for example the commissioner for employment and adult education uh, it is responsible for integration policies in uh, Sweden and there is uh, other units for integration and labor market and you can see a lot of policies a lot of implementations on Swedish learning uh, they are uh, they are establishing some SFE courses which means uh, Swedish learning for foreigners and uh, Swedish government is facilitating and promoting uh, language learning in order to uh, struggle with language barrier i think that's a great huge step uh, on integration uh, yeah i could say like that so how does this affect the relationship between immigrants and local people mm, yeah here i could say some of my observations um, because these observations are um, from what migrants talk in daily life that I, I often encounter. It is thought to be Swedes are politically correct, so with the urge of behaving correct, they don't show their racist and discriminative attitudes towards uh, migrants, but they are secretly are like that. I don't know, um, it's a huge, uh, you know, argument going on. Uh, in the society and I really admire the Swedish values that I can talk about it later but from the migrants point of view they think uh, there is a discrimination uh, in the society so this is affecting the relationship between migrants and local people because integration policies are not implementing very deeply you know uh, they are not affecting one by one the people the society so uh, these are the outcomes of the uh leakage in the integration policies and uh, the migrants here they think is um swedish is highly demanded in the labor market uh, the requirement to know swedish language on a very high level and they think it's discriminative i also think it's a very interesting labor market requirement because i think uh personally I have never met anyone here who doesn't speak English. Swedish people talk very high level of English uh, from uh, all levels of the society. And I think this could be argued. Uh, I also understand the tendency for demanding their original na native language, you know, towards the domination of English all over the world. Uh, because uh, English is dominating the other languages all over the world. 
but uh, requiring a very high level of English, Swedish, sorry, could be questioned uh, if this is discriminative or not. On the other hand, if you are not giving an opportunity to access the labor market by uh, demanding a very high level of Swedish, you will never find a work as a migrant. So this is also thought to be discriminative. Another point, um, migrants also think here, uh, Sweden maybe doesn't cause any wars itself, but gets a huge benefit, profit uh, from the wars as they uh, catch the opportunity you know, to sell their guns. And another point is ghetto, uh, ghettos. Um, they are just ought to be hung out to dry, I think. Uh, these are the words of the migrants who live here for a long time. For example, uh, I have moved uh, to Sweden in January. And from the time I have moved here, I have heard four or five bombings in the late nights, uh, in the middle of the night, for example. Uh, these bombings are happening because of the conflicts between drug uh, gangs. And the migrants think they have been um, resettled in some ghettos, like which is the uh, most popular, most famous one is Rosengart here. Uh, almost all the migrants are living there, uh, especially the, refugee, with the, the ones with the refugee status. And they think we have been uh, res resettled here by the government, by the authorities, and they don't care about us. Everything is happening here, the bombings, the shootings, but they just send the police uh, car and then nothing happens. So there is uh, a critics about it. But I think uh, Swedish values are very important. I really admire and um, how can I say appreciate that. What is what are Swedish values, for example? It's we could say respect to nature, gender equality, recycling, respect to nature, uh, being children friendly. Uh, multilingual sources, the libraries, the importance for education, uh, the role of decentralization. Uh, I think these values are very, very important, and I think migrants really appreciate that. So I can say uh, there are both uh, leakages and mm -hmm. also very, very up level uh, points. Uh, and when you think them together, uh, they really make sense and uh, they are really huge steps to make a social, equal and uh, respectful country. Thanks for all this information. Is there anything you would like to add? Uh, no, uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity for me to speak. It was very nice to meet you. Thank you again. Dear listeners, this is Gizemdik and Selena Lutkan. Today, we have talked about Sweden and immigration process. Thanks for listening. See you next time in Roads to Migrate.